ever pondered over who can be joined as plaintiffs or defendants in a civil suit? Today, we're going to shine a light on this very query as we dive into the intricacies of Order 1 of the Civil Procedure Code, otherwise known as the CPC. This order, aptly titled Parties to Suits, is a fundamental aspect of civil litigation, providing clear rules about who can participate as plaintiffs and defendants. It outlines the conditions for joining parties in a suit, whether they're connected jointly, severally, or in the alternative. This order is not just about the who, but also about the how and why. It's a cornerstone of civil proceedings, ensuring fair and orderly trials. Order 1 of the CPC is a critical cog in the machinery of justice, dictating the flow of civil suits and ensuring that everyone gets their day in court. So, let's delve into the specifics of the rules under Order 1. Rule 1 of Order 1 addresses who can be joined as plaintiffs in a civil suit. Now, you might ask, who exactly are plaintiffs? Well, plaintiffs are the ones who initiate a lawsuit, the party seeking legal relief. Now, let's dive into the details of Rule 1. This rule allows all persons to be joined in one suit as plaintiffs. But there is a condition. This can be done only when a right to relief is alleged to exist in these persons, arising from the same act or transaction or a series of acts or transactions. What does this mean? Let's break it down. Imagine a scenario where a faulty product from a company harms a group of consumers. All these consumers can come together to file a lawsuit against the company as they all have a right to relief arising from the same act, the faulty product. They can be joined as plaintiffs whether their rights to relief exist jointly, severally or alternatively. This rule is important because it promotes judicial efficiency. Instead of having multiple lawsuits for the same issue, the court can handle it in one go. But what if there are too many plaintiffs? Or what if joining all plaintiffs in one suit complicates things? Well, the court has provisions to handle such situations as well, which we will dive into in the next segment. That sums up Rule 1. Now, what if the court finds the joinder of plaintiffs may cause issues? Rule 2 of Order 1 gives power to the court to order separate trials. This rule comes into play when the court believes that the joinder of plaintiffs may complicate or delay the trial of the suit. You see, sometimes having multiple plaintiffs in the same trial can be like trying to juggle too many balls at once. It can get messy and slow things down. The court, being the guardian of justice, wants to ensure that the trial proceeds smoothly and efficiently. So, what can the court do? Well, it can put the plaintiffs to their election. In other words, it can ask the plaintiffs to choose, either stay together in the trial or go their separate ways. This way, the court can prevent any potential logjam and keep the trial on track. But that's not all. The court can also order separate trials. Imagine a scenario where a single trial with multiple plaintiffs becomes too complex or confusing. Splitting it into separate trials can make things much more manageable, providing a clearer path to justice. Or the court can make another order that it deems expedient. This shows the flexibility of the court in ensuring the smooth progression of the trial. It can adapt to the unique circumstances of each case, delivering justice in the most effective way possible. That's how the court can intervene for a smoother trial. But what about the defendant's side? Rules 3 and 3A of Order 1 discuss who can be joined as defendants and the court's power to order separate trials. We start with Rule 3, which is about the joinder of defendants in a civil suit. Essentially, this rule states that all persons may be joined in one suit as defendants, where there is an alleged right to relief against them. This relief could be in respect of, or arise out of, the same act transaction or series of acts or transactions. It could be claimed jointly, severally or alternatively. In simpler terms, if multiple individuals or entities are involved in the same incident or series of incidents that result in a dispute, they can all be named as defendants in the same lawsuit. This rule is designed to streamline the judicial process by allowing related disputes to be resolved in one go. Now, let's move on to Rule 3A. This rule gives the court the power to order separate trials if it believes that the joinder of defendants may complicate or delay the trial. It's a fail-safe mechanism to ensure that justice is served in a timely and efficient manner. Imagine a scenario where you have many defendants and their individual defenses are so diverse that they could potentially muddle the proceedings or cause unnecessary delays. 
In such cases, the court can exercise its power under Rule 3A to order separate trials or make any other order that it deems expedient in the interest of justice. Both these rules, Rule 3 and Rule 3A, are crucial parts of the Civil Procedure Code. They ensure that the rights of all parties are protected and that the court proceedings are conducted in an orderly and efficient manner. Unfortunately, these rules can be a bit complex to understand, especially if you're new to law. But remember, the law is a language in itself. And like any language, it becomes easier to understand the more you immerse yourself in it. That's the gist of Rules 3 and 3A. Now let's wrap up everything we've learned. We've covered a lot about Order 1 of the Civil Procedure Code. Let's wrap things up. We started with understanding who may be joined as plaintiffs as per Rule 1. Essentially, any persons with a right to relief arising out of the same act or transaction may be joined in a suit. Then, we moved to Rule 2, which empowers the court to order separate trials if the joinder of plaintiffs could potentially complicate or delay proceedings. We also explored Rule 3, which mirrors Rule 1 for defendants. All persons against whom a right to relief is alleged may be joined in one suit. Finally, Rule 3A gives the court the power to order separate trials if the joinder of defendants may cause complications or delays. These rules, part of the procedural aspect of the code, are essential to ensure fair and efficient civil proceedings. And there you have it. A breakdown of Order 1 of the Civil Procedure Code. Stay tuned for more legal insights.